Our stories around transformation are all a little different and individual. I have to admit that yesterday I did something that was a little bit retro. I went looking for a night deposit bank box at a bank. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not the first time I've done this recently. I find myself periodically in the situation where I really need to make a deposit, and I just think about the time when those deposit boxes used to be attached to banks. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I will try to explain this concept to you. <laughs> so, it's a little drawer built into the side of the bank where you would be able to put an envelope in there with a check and a deposit slip. Yes, I'm talking about paper. And to be clear, a check, which is a physical piece of paper, could be put with another piece of paper, which is a deposit slip, into an envelope, which, if I really need to take this back, is a piece of paper that has gummy stuff around the edges. And we put them in the envelope, you put them in this little slot, you close the slot, and in the mor on Monday morning, your check is at the bank without you being there. Now. Some of you might wonder why I would even need to do this, but in this case, I wasn't able to use the ATM. But as I was walking around the bank that I had picked for this experiment, I was saying to myself, why on earth would there be a night deposit box? Because we've had ATMs since I was in high school. And anyone watching me would have thought I was a little nuts. There was no night deposit. I even Googled it when I got back to my car. Other banks with a night deposit anyway. We are all subject to change, some of which we resist. And that includes things that really don't matter, like slots on the side of the bank building, which you might use every three years, which wouldn't seem so urgent if I didn't need to be better about leaving the office when the banks are still open. <laughs> Greeting change is never simple. It's changing our thinking, too, that's harder. Changing our worldview is very hard, and trying to move beyond that can be a whole new way of transformation. They say you don't step into the same river twice, and I've truly felt that this year, especially on Sunday mornings when I look out at the congregation and I realize what a joy it is and also a sorrow that the people who are here this morning are not the same people who were here a decade ago, five years ago, not the same people who were even here last week. A congregation is also like a wave. The shape may be the same, but the droplets are different, and that gives us the opportunity to be together in new ways. You know, our faith has deep roots in the area of transformation, in being the heretical truth seekers willing to take on the establishment religions to say, no, that's not right, and offer opportunities for people to come together where we freely enter into relationship together through covenant, not based on a statement or a creed, not for nothing, were we one of the first religions to understand that the embrace of science and the embrace of religious truths are not in conflict with one another. And I want to say that while The Origin of Species was published in 1859, there are still some who are struggling with that change. Of course, we know that not everything that changes should be embraced, and that's part of our discernment, to be willing to decide what's positive and what's not. The astronomical rise in income inequality, the deification of monopolists, the increased militarization of our police forces and frightening developments such as Cop City, these all make us think about whether we want that change and whether our role in that change is not so much an adaptation as resistance. On the personal scale, we have bemoaned so many things that change. It's very important, and one of those we know, all of this force of change makes it very important that we learn to take care of ourselves, not in some very self-focused way, but in the way that Lama Rod Owens asks us to do so, thinking about our care for ourself as part of our larger work in caring for community. If we see continuous growth and learning, that part of our free search for truth and meaning as part of our work together, it might go a little easier for us. When I had the privilege of serving on the Commission on Institutional Change, which was an effort to 
rethink the way we are together and the way we think about who we are. It was truly aimed to be a transformational effort, a huge barrier. A huge barrier, I say, as the current president of the Unitarian Universalist Ministers Association, were my colleagues, some of whom had not considered new ideas for a very long time. Because in those times, one of the things that was true was that ministers were not required to do any continuing education after the completion of seminary. If you think about that, every profession requires continuing education, but we had to have a long fight to get something passed that said that ministers should continue to grow and change in a faith that's all about growing and changing. So now, in those days, ministers were granted after a few years of, of getting to know what it means to be a minister, what we, call, what we then called final fellowship and what we now call full fellowship. The change to full fellowship reemphasizes the value of a learning ministry, the value of a learning community open to change and growth. The role of everything in our world is changing. I think it's important for us to remember what transformations we need to work forward in our own lives in order to be present to it. These are, we face scopes of changes so immense that we need to be moving and growing. We need to understand this journey as one of adventure, as ourselves, as companions who pick up one another when we stumble doing new things. If we can comprehend the opportunities, even in changes we don't want, then perhaps we will begin to live into the promise of transformation. Change is coming. What do we need to imagine?